Now this may seem like I'm using Copilot or Claude, but actually all those are off. But check this out, fix this code. Done, accept, accept. Write comments for this code. Boom. This is happening real time and this is really, really fast. How about chat? What's wrong with this function? There it goes. That is happening in real time. That is insane. How am I doing this? Well, there's actually a few pieces to this puzzle and I'm going to take you through it in this video. To start with, I'm not actually running the model on my Mac. Even though this Mac is fully capable of running this model, which by the way, happens to be Quen3 Coder, 30 billion parameter model that just recently came out. And that's really good for coding scenarios and coding autocomplete scenarios because it's a fill in the middle type of model. I go into more detail about that in my member videos. By the way, thanks to the members of the channel for your continued support. Members get extra videos and so on. And you get emojis. Are you a member? Are you using the emojis in the comments? You should try it out. So I just ran this benchmark and I got 5,800 tokens per second. And it actually ran on this machine, which is a machine I built a few videos ago. How am I getting such insane speeds from this? Well, first, LM Studio and Olama are probably tools that you're already familiar with. I've showed you how to set these up before and they're easy, especially LM Studio that has a UI where you can control pretty much all the aspects. You can download your models here. Here's Quen3 Coder 30 billion. You can run a local server and you can actually use that in your code editor or you can chat with it right in here in the UI. This is what I'm doing and I'm getting 71 tokens per second from Quencoder 30 billion. And there is a big but here. I don't know. Well, maybe some people will say it. LM Studio only supports one concurrent request. Let me show you. Here, I'm gonna set up one concurrent request in my benchmark and I'm gonna run the uh, LM Studio scaling benchmark that allows me to query against a certain model. Here I'm querying Quencoder 30 and it's using the running instance in LM Studio and I'm getting 80 tokens per second. Pretty good. But let's say I wanted to do two concurrent users. Stick with me here for a moment. I know you're probably going to be like, oh, I'm only one user. Why would I need two concurrent users? Hang on. So here I'm going to do two concurrent users. We'll see LM Studio is generating successful two out of two and we're getting 79 tokens per second. Pretty close. Four concurrent users. What are you seeing here? You're seeing that this is not scaling. This is just queuing up and you can see that right here generating two queued. It's queuing up the requests one by one and only processing them one at a time. So there you go. Four out of four successful. We generated 2000 tokens, 80 tokens per second, which is about the same. So we're not getting any kind of benefit from uh, running concurrent users. It can't. Even though LM Studio uses Llama CPP, the popular library as a backend, it's not able to run multiple queries in parallel, which holds it back a bit. So here's Llama CPP's Llama Bench after you compile Llama CPP locally. I'm getting about 78 tokens per second for that model here. Now Llama CPP does come with a tool called Llama Parallel, so you can test the parallelism, but uh, unfortunately LM Studio doesn't support that. Olama does. And here's another tool that does. Docker. Yes, that same Docker that developers use to develop applications locally so that they maintain consistency of the environment. So let's say Docker model run, actually Docker model list. Let's take a look at what I have here. Let's do Docker model run AI Gemma 3 and we'll give it a high prompt. I know you love high, but this is just to demonstrate quickly what's happening here. And there it is. It answered me. Great. Now, why would I use this tool? Well, couple of reasons. One, it actually supports parallelism. And two is it can be deployed with your applications, with your Docker Compose applications. Here I've got a Docker file. I'm installing my pip requirements. I have a load test, but in my Docker Compose file, I'm including the environment, which has uh, the number of concurrent users. Let's start with one, for example. And then I can specify along with my services that I want to expose in Docker Compose. If you're not familiar with Docker and Docker compose. There's other great videos and I can post to some of them, uh, some resources down below in the description. But basically, this will allow you to run your applications alongside with your models. Because when you run a normal Docker container, it cannot utilize the GPU of the system. Now, Docker model runner is able to. So that's why you have a Docker model section. Now you specify what model you want to run, you specify the context size. And this is important right here, the runtime flags. This will allow the Docker model 
model to answer parallel requests. So I can set that to four, for example. And let's try this. I'm gonna observe what's happening on the GPU here. And we are in fact using the GPU. You can see it right there. And I'm getting 66 tokens per second for this model. Now I can also set this to concurrent users of four. So now I'm gonna issue four requests simultaneously. And I'm getting to why that's important for software developers. But I just wanna show you this right here. We're now up to 88 tokens per second. So the requests are not being queued like they are in LM Studio. There is some parallel processing going on here. Not that much, but that's where the next technology comes in handy. There's several layers of technologies here. One is parallelism. Parallelism allows us to saturate the GPU to be able to concurrently answer multiple requests at the same time. And this is important when it comes to code completion. When you're doing chat, one request at a time is all you can do. But when you're doing code completion, it's sending tons of data to your provider. In this case, the provider is the GPU living in this box over here. And I'll talk about what's in that box in a moment. GPU stay saturated, queuing drops down and latency drops down as well. Now there is a tool, you might've heard of it, called VLLM, it's an open source tool. And I haven't covered this tool at all yet on the channel, but I'm gonna start getting into it because this is actually like a step up. It's a little bit more to configure and that's where Docker is gonna help us out as well because Docker will allow you to easily spin up VLLM with NVIDIA support and that's what I'm running here. I'm running the RTX Pro 6000. Now we're seeing the true power of what that card can do. Sure, that card can game and I've shown that before on the channel when I first popped this open and started playing with it, but I was using LM Studio, I was using tools like Olama, but the Docker setup with VLLM can actually be transported. You can use it with other NVIDIA cards like the 40 series or the 50 series. Smaller, non-professional cards that are gonna be cheaper, but still give you that parallelism by using VLLM. So here I am connected through SSH to this machine from my Mac and I'm actually spinning up a Docker container, passing in the GPUs, all of them. I only have one in there, but that's what that is. I'm sending in my model, which happens to be Quen Coder 30 billion. And this is the other piece of the puzzle right here, FP8. More on that in a moment. But here's my image, it's a VLLM image. That way I don't need to worry about setting that up every single time. I just spin up the Docker container and it works. So here, let me show you. How can I improve this code? Boom, there it goes. It just received that and instantly provided a response. You might have even heard the little tickle twinkle sound from that coil wind that's happening on the GPU. That was just one request right there. What if I issue a bunch of them? And there they are, four requests, four concurrent users, 298 tokens per second. And it's calculating that because we've generated a total of 4,016 tokens in just a few seconds. And we've been up to four so far. Let's go to uh, 256 concurrent users, yeah. I'm not even joking. Look at that. Running benchmark with 256 concurrent users. It's sending 256 requests all at the same time to that GPU waiting for the response. Let's see what happens here. Look at that. The throughput is 6,000 tokens per second. This is what's happening on that Linux box right here, by the way. And now we've started responding. Look at that. They're all going in. We've generated 254,000 tokens at a rate of 5,800 tokens per second. That is just crazy. And we can go even higher. So we talked about Docker. We talked about VLLM with Docker. The last thing I want to mention is quantization. And this applies specifically to NVIDIA cards. Also AMD, but AMD Instinct cards, those are server grade cards, not the consumer cards. But all NVIDIA black hole cards, including the consumer cards, will support and do support FP8 quantization natively. They also support FP4 quantization, and I'm gonna do a video on that separately. That's even crazier speeds. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see that. But on my Mac, Macs are pretty good and pretty fast, but they have an issue with parallelism and they support only GGUF models, safe tensor models, and MLX quantizations are Apple's own quantizations that are optimized for Apple Silicon. There's a lot more detail I can go into and I do in other videos, but this video is just an overview. Now, FP8 is a floating point quantization. So here we have Quencoder 30B instruct and originally this model is in BF16, which is unquantized. They also have the FP8 version, which is quantized down to eight, but not integer eight. This is floating point eight. 
I'll link to this post down below. Basically, this is how Nvidia gets things to run really, really fast. And FP4 is even faster. So you have your baseline precision, your weights, for example, the 16 floating point weights. And now if you want to convert that to FP8, you have to take all those values in the original weights and convert them down to just eight bits. But whereas integer eight bits are static and they're spread out equally across eight values, floating point is a little bit more fluid, giving you the ability to actually get better precision depending on the data. This is a good read. I'll link to this down below. Also, check out Julia Turk's channel. I'll link to a video where she talks about floating point four. It's goes really deep into this stuff. That's the model that I'm running right now is the FP8 version, which is giving us those crazy speeds and supported natively by those tensor cores that are in that chip. And it is getting kind of warm in here because, well, this thing produces a lot of heat. So I'm gonna go now, check out Docker Model Runner, which is something really approachable and really easy to use, and check out my build of that machine right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.